The mummy makeover is truly a real thing now. My girl Aquanetta got a mummy makeover. She got rid of her old butt and got a new re-sculpted butt. Her breast didn't pass the pencil test, so she got rid of her old breast and got implants. She got rid of her stomach and now she has a flat stomach. She got rid of her gooseneck, crow's feet, and laugh lines. You know, when she came from the doctor, she was in so much pain. And for two months, I nurtured her, I washed her, I bathed her. I just did everything to her to make sure that she healed well. Because I couldn't wait to get hold of that new body. So right before she healed up, we were both looking in the mirror together at her new body. And she says, you know what? There's one more thing I would like to get rid of. So it turns out, the next thing she got rid of wasn't even on her body. It was me. I couldn't believe I could ever did me like that. Just threw me away. I just loved it so much. It just, oh God, it just hurt me so bad. Well, anyway, it all started when her friend got a mummy makeover. When I first met Aquanetta, it seemed like she went from voluptuous to dump truck overnight. When we would be in Walmart and she had to walk backwards, little kids would be like, beep, 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 beep. After talking to her friend, she went into full mummy makeover craze. I remember her asking me, how can you truly love me with a stomach like mine? I said, Aquanetta, I love your stomach. All three of them. She said that she was big boned and held water. Have you ever noticed that with fat people, it's never the food they eat? I said, now baby, don't worry about other people. I love and want you. I said, now baby, listen to me. You don't have to put your body through that torture, that mutilation, that, that, that slaughterhouse. You don't have to do that. I love you and I will help you. From there, we started working out. And she will quit the very next day. And I would lie to her and tell her, I said, baby, you can't stop now. We're almost at the finish line. But I wasn't the only one lying now. She would quit and be telling her friend, girl, I'm doing crunches twice a day. And I'm saying to myself, yeah, right. Captain in the morning, Nestle at night. Well, she couldn't do it on her own, so uh, she went on ahead and got the mummy makeover. And after that, she flat out ran me off. You can't be somewhere where you ain't love no more. And I found out Quick, that is a thin line between love and trespassing. I used to run into Aquanetta in different places and it would just, uh, it would just, it would just hurt me so bad. I remember one time I ran into her in a nightclub and in disbelief, I had to watch the love of my life seduce another man. She was on the dance floor dancing with this guy, but I was on the dance floor too, pretending like you know, I wasn't watching, but I was watching everything in complete disbelief. I was looking so hard I couldn't even dance. Her and that dude left the dance floor, and she took that dude out to her car. And I followed him out there, and I sat there and watched that car go up and down. It must have been good to that dude, too, because she had his head hanging out of that car like a German shepherd on a Sunday drive. And when she got through with him, I don't know what kind of dog he was, but he was hanging out of that car. And, you know, what really bothers me about the whole thing is, is that she never did that to me. After going through all that, I still tried to get her back. But to her, I had gone from her Martin Luther King to her Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard trick. She told me that I would need $500 to spend an evening with her. Now I ain't gonna lie, I was thinking about it. But she crossed the line, the money line, when she told me I need to give her an additional $150 up front just for her safety. Here's somebody that has survived a slaughterhouse to be beautiful. And she's worried about her safety? Shit, what about my safety?